Seeing the story behind the data is something every app user wants, whether it's rising sales, occupancy rates, sleep patterns, or cups of coffee consumed while building in Bubble. It's really important that your users be able to understand things visually at a glance, and it keeps your app ahead of the competition. Stick around for this part one of a two-part series where you'll learn how to build pie charts, donut charts, and gauge charts. Let's dive into our outline and see what we're gonna cover in this video. So first thing we're gonna do is we are going to look at the uh, plugin itself. We're gonna install it and then we're gonna get going on some examples. Our first example, actually we're gonna pit stop before this with a very familiar chart making tool of uh, Excel or Google Sheets. And we're gonna use that same static data source that we see over there, and we're gonna put that over into our bubble one. So it can kind of connect the dots between something that's familiar uh, that we use for data and then something that's over in bubble uh, to, yep, to lock that in. Then we're gonna take a step up from that data source, a static one, and go to a dynamic one. Because I imagine you know each of your users has their stuff specifically that they wanna see on a pie chart or whatever, uh, compared to some something else that you wanna display statically. Uh, then we're going to take a look at some styling options and uh, just kind of see what's available, uh, made available by the plugin. Next, we'll change it over to a donut chart. We'll see the, the same data on a, on a donut chart. It's really stylistically, what are you looking to have done? And then we will see a gauge chart after that. Gauge chart just kind of comes from like the old style speedometer stuff. Um, that's really what's going on here. And we'll see how to get this little notch uh, thing so that, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, it's like something that's going, you know, redlining or, you know, anyone that's driven a motor vehicle. <laughs> Okay, this is a sponsor video. So I chose to do this one because looking out at all of the options for charts on the Bubble platform, um, you know, there's just a number of them that really don't do it for me in terms of their styling and whatnot. So uh, I chose to go with this one because it is a really robust solution. In fact, look at all these options uh, that is made available by the plugin maker. Now, if you are here looking specifically for pie charts uh, and uh, donut charts and so on. Uh, you'll see that here under this radial gauge area, so you can click into that and get started. Uh, but just as a quick mention here of the types of charts that this one has available for it, because you know it might not be just you came for a pie chart, you're kind of looking for a solution, right? So here's what's available. We have line or area charts, bar charts, what we'll see here with the, these kind of, uh, both of these are actually donut charts with a different amount of cutout. We can see 25% and 70%. We'll see that value change in our examples. Uh, line charts, polar area charts, sales funnel charts, which I actually like that they have a different version of that one that goes downwards. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, radar charts and geographic charts that you can even bring down to the country size. Uh, the last one I'll cover here is this tree map one because I think it's pretty cool that, did you know, I mean, I didn't even know until looking at this that, that's, oh, okay, I guess Bitcoin is about more than half of, uh, you know, compared to this side, right? This is like almost said like a 60% line if we look left to right on this, that, okay, I guess, uh, you know, that it's that much bigger, right? You can make these really easy visual comparisons. That's what we're going to be working with. Let's actually dive into first an example here where we're going to look at uh, this this set of stuff. Let's say it's convergence or sales. And, uh, you know, so we've moved on from this chart. We're actually in this uh, first data source part now. And I'm going to take this and insert a chart here. So uh, not this one, but rather a let's go donut chart here. Okay, so we can see that all we really need to make a chart is just something, and this is something familiar for all of us, right? We can just pop in these numbers, put them in a row, you know, maybe even give this a try. If you've never, ever made a chart before, make that the first thing you do. Help yourself out and see, you know, connect the dots uh, in terms of what data is put there. You control this data directly. Boom, it, it makes that. But now let's go and let's jump over to Bubble where we're gonna install. So we'll do a search now uh, for premium premium charts. There we are. Uh, we'll just go ahead and subscribe. I'll note here that $14 a month because Bubble prorates 
plugin subscriptions. That comes down to less than 50 cents a day to try it out, play around with it. And again, the way I look at these solutions is that when you are building anything in Bubble, you will encounter an obstacle or a challenge, and then you'll overcome it. Then you'll encounter another obstacle and challenge, and then you'll see and you know plan your approach and see how you can overcome back, overcome that. Sometimes you need help from an external developer if you've you know never done this before, or you know even if you have done it before, you actually know how much of a time saving it is for someone to have pre built the solution for you. And so that's why I'm saying that you know when and you have things like this that are supported by the author, um, it's great and it's worth every penny. Okay, so that being said, then head over to a page where you will, uh, let's go look for pie here. Just go straight for a nice, uh, oh, pie. I think a pecan pie, that's, that's the one for me. Uh, okay, but so we have this set of data over here. I'm actually just going to take this and we're going to work with this and bring it over into Bubble. So this series values, I'm going to set up like so. And just note that in this uh, you know chart data area, these have all got a match kind of like, so I didn't do it. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do it with these two rows. But if I were to do that, let's just take a look here. And so when we look at this donut one, we can see one, two, three, four. Now it didn't, uh, if I actually had these labeled as day one, yeah, we can see that that label shows up there. So it's kind of it's kind of what's going on here basically with this same setup. And again, I like Excel because we're all super familiar with it. We know what's going on. And then when we start to type things into these boxes, we don't always have a one-to-one. -one. I made this action and it made this result uh, cause and effect thing. And that's what's great about a video like this. Here it is. Here's your cause and effect. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna do its its thing. Uh, now you do need eight different colors. I'm just going to copy those in. So a couple of them will repeat, but then we'll get a refresh on this page and this. So this data source example one here, pie chart, this is where we're at. And oh yeah, let's actually make it a, be a pie chart. First things first, head to this cutout percentage, put it down to zero if you are going for a pie chart. Um, and then, yeah, we'll look at the settings in like some stylistic uh, decisions afterwards. Okay. So we've got a nice pie, pie chart. And again, you know, when it comes to the colors, this could just as easily be looking like this because I think these are cooler, to be honest. But it's but that's like go to go to an AI, go to chat GTP, say, hey, you're a designer for something that looks like, I don't know, uh, a color for granite quarry or something. I don't know what 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 color scheme that would be. But, you know, that that's kind of the idea. And then give have it give you eight colors. And that's, that's what you get back um, if you're not looking for something that looks like a circus like this. Okay, so we have seen now um, example set data set one. Now we're gonna take a look at data set number two. So uh, when we look here, what data are we gonna look at? Well, in our pie chart, we are gonna look at this. So, you know, from the 1st of January, basically every day we're tracking what, how many open browser tabs that we have. And uh, then this column is actually the new ones in the last 24 hours. So it's just basically that day's stuff versus the day before it, right? Okay, so that's the data that we're gonna be putting in here. So let's go and uh, we'll do a search for uh, the, the browser tabs. And uh, not a constraint, but uh, what, what I wanna do is like, if you were to notice here, uh, on uh, this here, so like day one, for day six to be matched with, with item number 10 or whatever, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that uh, you sort these things according to, so we'll do it according to this date, we'll say no, and then we'll take each item's date in this case, and we're gonna format it. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're using dates as labels, you know, here's, here's a good, decent way to do it, uh, custom, and here we'll just go month, day, day. And that'll get that going. Since we already have that uh, sort value in here, we'll do that. And then we'll just go straight for, instead of each item's uh, date, each item's new in the past 24 hours. And we'll just leave the colors as is. And maybe I'll just go even go and I'll say, turn turn the legend off. No, we'll leave it on, we'll leave it on. Um, Cause here we can we can see those those values. Uh, and it has the ability to turn turn a few things off. You can um, 
allow that ability. But okay, so what are we seeing here? Well, we're seeing here from a pie chart standpoint, like which day was the biggest, uh, you know, culprit of the tabs going up? It was the sixth and eighth. So we could look back maybe what happened on those days and, you know, what, what, why are these tabs growing so much? Shut it down, shut it down. Uh, Chrome is a resource hungry browser. Uh, but okay, so that is what it looks like to get some dynamic data there. Now let's go and let's look at our styling options. Uh, okay, so I just showed that we can we can show or hide the legend, and I would uh, I hadn't refreshed since making that option, so we'll just see this uh, legend go away. But also note before that goes away, there's a little there's the amount of spacing there between that and the legend, you know, the info above, and you could you could push that up or something like that if you uh, want to play around with it. And you can also hide items from a legend. So here, uh, like if we were only interested in ones, especially like anything less than like uh, 0.0001 or something. So if you're trying to hide stuff that's zero in your data set, that's kind of the handy thing here. And then I'll also point out that, you know, I'm not gonna go through every one of these and looking at all the highlights, but you can check out the documentation for each one of them. Okay, one thing I'll note here is this tooltip. If you want to turn it off, or if you want to add a custom one, so uh, let's let's take a peek at a uh, option for custom. This is what this uh, tool is set up to be able to do. You can hover on something, and you can have a group show up with some group data in it, and you can you know set that data to be related to uh, items. And let's just let's just see how to generally get a, a group uh, set up. So I'm just going to change this to like some, you know, not so great looking color. But the thing I want to point out, this custom tooltip is just any value. You can type in any value for this, as long as it's not something used by anything else, then it's unique, right? Uh, so I'll just show you one, if you want to set up a custom tooltip, this is how you do it. But then two, if you just want to, if you want to turn the tooltip off because you don't find it helpful or anything, don't have a group but do have something here that like tries to call a group. And if, if it's trying to call something empty and not there, then, you know, nothing shows, which is exactly the same as, you know, turning it off. Okay. So there's that. All right. So let's moving on thousand separators, uh, you know, for people outside of the U S I think there are, uh, certain they're, they're different in certain areas. Uh, so there's that availability chart padding, uh, animation duration for, you know, when it first comes onto the screen. And uh, we'll take a look at some of these ones uh, on the next ones. So I don't want to point out too much on those ones. Data labels, let's just turn that on. And then obviously, you know, each of these styles here is related to the data labels, right? This USD or whatever. Uh, so I'm not going to go into each one of these. You could dig deeper if you want, but we can see that we can customize font size, font color, the, the length or the the weight of it and so on and so forth that we can also, you know, decide if we want, uh, round the corners, or not. So that's all of our styling sections here. Now let's turn our attention over to making a donut chart. Okay. So for a donut chart, um, it's actually basically very similar to a pie chart, except that you would do something like, uh, go with a value here for a cutout percentage. And as we saw on, uh, I believe it was here that, you know, if you want to style it after some of these, so like 25%, and then we'll look at the, these, these, uh, how to make the distance for this, uh, cutaway in between stuff. Um, so we'll see that. So 68, and then it's actually this, so this section border width, I'm going to bump that up to eight, and then we're going to see, uh, the, the effects take place on here and we'll see this turn into a donut chart cool so you can see that these these ones are a little bit bigger a touch bigger than before because that was five as a value and now they're eight cool so that brings us through making a donut chart now let's take a look at a gauge chart gauge chart again just to get a visual on this this is kind of like the what, what you think of when you when you're looking at a gauge chart um and so this one, the special setup that you're going to do is you're basically going to want to only have uh, two, so so you, uh, two values. And what I'm going to suggest is that uh, you know you've you know how to do the dynamic stuff, so I'm just going to go with these ones, and uh, I'm going to put that there for the series labels, and then uh, so let's see, 800 and 200. So the way that I would suggest is that. 
because I want this whole thing to be basically like a thousand worth of stuff that whatever, and actually in this example, let me, let me just build it and then I'll, then I'll speak about it. So, uh, this, this cutout percentage actually will determine the, um, the thickness of the gauge. So that would be this part here. And what you want to do is ch change the circumference to 180, change the rotation to negative 90. And then now let's take a look at this and let's go ahead and turn these data. Up. Well, let's take away the percent and let's take away the name because there's just a lot of information there. But here, let's say our savings goal was $1,000. So here we have something that's, you know, $800 or whatever. And it's kind of like, how full are we of like a thermometer chart or how full are we, you know, on, on this sense. So whatever that data is that you want to use back to what I skipped over before when I was uh, uh, talking about this, but then just left it behind is that this number here, the second number, just take it. There's, there's three numbers here. The first number is this number. The second number is actually what you want the entire thing to be, which is not an explicit number in the 800 and 200 that I have here, but the results of this one comes from the total minus this one. And that's how you would obtain this second, this number. So whatever you want for those, that's the subtraction to make in order to make this uh, gauge chart. And then, you know, obviously you can, you can even play with, so whatever those values are, maybe you want to turn off this labeling and, you know, like, again, if it is like a savings goal or something, right, like you're making a financial type of app uh, and it's, you know, per month or per year or whatever, you could just, uh, you could, you could just drop a regular text uh, here right and just ha have that be the the title of the chart as well with with the value in it okay so that's how you make a gauge chart and that's it if you like this video give it a like subscribe to the channel for more tips about bubble and be sure to check out our sponsor tech blocks they've been building a bubble for plugins since 2017 again great customer service a lot of different options i'll see you in the next one